tonight, Abia State Police Command confirms kidnap of prelate of Methodist Church of Nigeria, Samuel Uche, and two other priests in Uturi Ube Axis of the state. APC presidential hopeful Bola Tinubu describes PDP presidential candidate Atiku Babukar as a worthy opponent for 2023 as main opposition party elects the former vice president as its flag bearer for the 2023 presidential poll. Upsets as more candidates emerge for ABGA and APC senatorial seats in the southern geopolitical zones. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visits troops on the front line of war in Kharkiv as Russia claims full control of the city of Lehman in the Donetsk region. We start up tonight with the news of the reported kidnap of the prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, Pramit Samuel Uche. Reports indicate he was kidnapped today along the Turuhube axis of Abia State. A police public relations officer in Abia State, Jeffrey Obuna, has confirmed the report. According to him, efforts are in top gear to, towards securing uh, re his rescue, as well as those of other priests who were with him at the time of the incident. A police ask for credible information from members of the public that could help with the efforts for rescue. Politics now. Former Vice President Atiku Babakar has won the PDP presidential ticket to win the contest with uh, 371 votes ahead of his close contender, Governor Nyesum Wike of River State, who polled 237 votes. Third in the race is former Senate President Bukola Saraki with 70 votes, followed by Governor Udom Imanol of Akwaibom State with 38 votes. Governor Bala Mohammed of Bochi State pulled 20 votes, while former Senate President Pius Angim pulled 14 votes. On the 23rd of March this year, when I stood before you and Nigerians and declared my interest to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, in that statement, I made a commitment to five issues. One, to pledge to unify this country. And that was why I referred myself as a unifier. I also committed that I was going to deal decisively with our security challenges in this country. I also pledge to confront our economic challenges, which were all caused by the APC government. The PDP made Nigeria one of the most prosperous, or if not the prosperous country on the African continent. We implemented economic reforms that brought about jobs, that brought about prosperity in this country. The APC came and wiped out all those gains. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why I said today is a very, very historic day because it is going to give us an opportunity for us to reverse all the misgovernance of the APC government. Reactions have continued to trail the choice of the former vice president to fly the presidential flag of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 general elections. Those reactions are coming from different quarters, particularly from political analysts who are expressing their opinion on the process leading to his election as the candidate for the PDP. The challenges he would have to face in the race to the presidency and what impact an Atiku presidency could have on several sectors of Nigeria's policy. Our correspondent Kayla Megwa reports.
months of speculation, calculations, and political permutations within Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, came to a climax as the party finally decided through indirect primaries that the candidate who will represent the party in his race to the presidency come 2023 is Atiku Abubakar, the Turakin Adamawa. I therefore pledge that I will work to ensure I restore unity and I give a sense of belonging to all Nigerians irrespective of their places of origin and irrespective of the faith they practice. Party faithful are satisfied with the process leading to his election. You've seen how organized we are, you've seen how transparent we are, and we are telling the other party to come and copy from the masters of the game. They aren't the only ones satisfied with the election process. Political analysts describe the PDP primary process as free and fair, commending the party for sticking to their timetable for the exercise. It was well uh, planned, well, well delivered, and I commend PDP for showing leadership to other political parties. These analysts believe the PDP choosing Atiku Abubakar as his presidential candidate is a game changer in the race to 2023 for all political parties. Atiku emerging as the flag bearer of the party has now changed the entire landscape, political landscape, particularly how APC would respond and react and how it would inform their own special convention to bring about the flag bearer. They speak on the challenge ahead for candidate Atiku as he prepares to square okay. off with candidates candidate. from other political parties. Uh, the South is eager to have the presidency. Uh, Atiku is from the north of Nigeria. After eight years of worry, it's going to be a very difficult one for a lot of persons to swallow. We've heard bandits, kidnapped, but not so much in terms of punishment. We have also seen favoritism in appointment and a few other things. We are, we are not sure whether an Atiku will be able to take Nigeria out of the by doing the right thing. We tried to find out what an Atiku presidency would mean for youth participation in politics and governance. What would be the role of young people in a cabinet or in a government that Atiku heads? If we don't have a president that understands intergenerational dialogue and equity, what we will see have are old, strong men and women, you know, making laws and making decisions on our behalf. This will be the sixth time Atiku Abubakar will be throwing his hat in the ring to become president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Will the sixth time be the charm? What will be the thrust of his campaign? And would Nigerians buy what he's selling? The next nine months will be full of political fireworks as Nigerians watch very keenly to see and hear what candidates like Atiku Abubakar have to offer. Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. The presidential aspirant of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, has congratulated former Vice President Atiku Abubakar on his victory at the presidential primary of the People's Democratic Party. In a statement today, Senator Tinubu believes a former Vice President Atiku will now fly the main opposition party's flag again in the 2023 general elections. Uh, he believes he will be a, a worthy opponent. Similarly, another presidential aspirant, Peter Obi, has congratulated former Vice President Atiku Babaka on his emergence as the flag bearer of the PDP in the forthcoming presidential election. Obi, who was Atiku's running mate in the 2019 election, took to Twitter today to share a warm message of compliments for his associate. Leaders in the southern and central regions of the country under the auspices of the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum have faulted the People's Democratic Party for electing a northern presidential candidate for the 2023 general elections. They describe the outcome of the size as an affront to the people of the south and ask politicians in the region to reject any nomination for the office of the vice president. And a communique just jointly signed today by leaders of the groups made, who made the forum they specifically faulted the emergence of the former vice president as the main opposition party's flag bearer. The group says undoubtedly the singular motive is to perpetrate the hegemony of the North, given that President Muhammad Buhari, a Muslim from the North and a Fulani on, of Fulani origin, will be competing, completing his full tenure of eight years by this time next year. SMBLF calls on all politicians of Southern extraction to refuse the position of a running mate to any Northern presidential candidate, which will equally be viewed as subjugating their people to political slavery.
down south, some senatorial candidates of the All Progressives Congress, as well as the All Progressives Grand Alliance, have promised adequate representation for their constituents if voted during the 2023 election. They made the promise while addressing their supporters shortly after the announcement of results. It's dance time for Joel Thomas Odorako and his supporters. That's how he chooses to celebrate his win at the ABC primary for Delta South Senatorial District. Although he is unopposed, the party goes on to conduct the primary. He is sure of victory for his party at the general election come 2023. I'm someone with wide experience in governance, and I'm someone with wide experience in public service and private se uh, service, and I will bring those experiences to the National Assembly with my other colleagues. Like in Delta South, Delta Central Senatorial District also produces a sole aspirant for the primary. We will embark on sensitizing the people on the mission of APC in Delta. We will embark on ensuring a maximum registration of Deltans, not just Delta Central, the whole of Delta. In Cross River State, it's a large turnout of delegates who are here to elect the flag bearer for the state's northern senatorial district. It's a contest between two, Cecilia Adams and Martin Orim, a former chief of staff to the governor. By the end of the exercise, Martin Orim polls 254 votes out of a total of 255 accredited delegates leaving his contender with no vote. I want to assure them that this mandate they have given to me, I will cruise with it to victory in 2023. <laughs> In Egypt State, there is a mild drama at this venue in Ifaki, where delegates are waiting for the exercise to begin. Journalists are protesting an order by the spokesperson of the All Progressives Congress in the state that they be barred from covering the process. Calm soon returns and voting gets underway before thugs invade, interrupting the process. The military intervenes, restoring calm. Senator Olufumi Adetumbi scored 85 votes. Honorable Cyril Fashui polled 111 votes. Adekiti South and Central Districts, both aspirants win unopposed. Delegates of the All Progressive Grand Alliance in Anambra Central Senatorial District converge on the Professor Dora Kuyili Women Development Center. They look in high spirit as they elect the party's senatorial representative. They cast their ballot to determine who of the three aspirants is better fit for the role. I'm here to tell our people that I'm going to work for them. I'm here to serve. I've served even in the parliament. I've worked. I, I believe in resort. I'm a resort-oriented parliamentarian. This phase done with. These contenders will be slugging it out with others outside their parties come Saturday, February 25th, 2023. Former APGA National Chairman Victor Omer suffered a major upset today in the race for the Anambra Central Senatorial District seat. To Honorable Dozier Wangpo, Omer polled 151 votes, while Wangpo, who represents Anocha in Jikoka, Dunokofia Federal Constituency, recorded 162 votes in an exercise held at the Professor Dora Akunyili Women Development Center. The APGA returning officer for the Anambra Central Senatorial District primary election, Mrs. Elizabeth Mokocha, announced the winner after a peaceful voting process. At the Northern Senatorial Contest in the state, the former First Lady, Ebele Obiano, won the North Senatorial ticket in the primary election. Mrs. Obiano won the race on the platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance. She defeated the immediate past chief of staff to her husband, Mr. Primus Odile, to clinch the uh, senatorial ticket, which was held at the Chuba Ikeazu Stadium, Onisha. The former Anambra First Lady polled 152 votes to beat Mr. Odile, who came second with 122 votes. And in part two after the break, a first female governorship candidate in Adamawa State promises prioritization of mining industry and women empowerment if elected next year. That's the moment to join us again.
Welcome back. If you just joined us to watch the news at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Abia State Police Command confirms kidnap of prelate of Methodist Church of Nigeria, Samuel Uche, and two other priests in Uturu Hube axis of the state. APC presidential hopeful Bola Tinubu describes a PDP presidential candidate at Tikubu Broker as a worthy opponent for 2023 as main opposition party elects the former vice president as his flag bearer for the presidential poll. Upset says more candidates emerge for APGA and APC senatorial seats in the southern geopolitical zones. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visits troops on the front line of war in Kharkiv as Russia claims full control of the city of Lehman in the Donetsk region. We'll stay with developments on the electoral scene at this weekend. The People's Democratic Party says it has, after very extensive consultations, cancelled all primaries in Ebony State. A statement by the National Publicity Secretary, Honorable Debo, Debo Olomunaba, says the decision was made after extensive consultations and deliberations by the National Working Committee of the party. A party charges all aspirants, critical shareholders, leaders, and members of the great party in their Boeing state to remain calm, united, and focused as the PDP takes firm steps to rescue the nation from the misrule of the All Progressives Congress. Well, a major upset occurred during last Saturday's APC governorship primaries in Adamawa State, where the serving senator representing Adamawa Senatorial Zone in the Red Chamber of the National Assembly, Senator Aisha Dahiru Binani, a female federal lawmaker, clinched the ticket to contest for the governor's office in the 2023 general elections. Binani, as she's popularly called, against all odds, defeated heavyweights to emerge as winner by scoring 430 votes. She's the first woman in Adamawa State to attain the feat and second in the country, following the footsteps of late Aisha Al Hassan, known as Mama Taraba. Speaking to Channel Television in her residence in Yola, the Adamawa State capital, Senator Aisha describes her victory as a victory for all women, not only in Adamawa, but the country at large. Yola, Adamawa State. Records have already been broken by the victory of Aisha Binani as APC candidate for governor, if she carries the day at the governorship elections. But as expected, the road to her triumph didn't come without hurdles, one of which was allegations, prior to the primaries of names of delegates being replaced, but which was resolved before the primaries. I appreciate the electorate, the delegates of uh, Adama State for making the right choice because uh, every aspirant will tell you that he is the person to beat. In her reaction to her candidacy, she discloses what her priorities will be if she becomes the first female governor of Adamawa State, which will also make her effectively the first elected female governor of a state in Nigeria. The few first months I will focus on the human capacity development and the productive sectors of uh, productive sector of agriculture, and it's bearing in mind that Adama State is, is is an agricultural-based economy state. We have the mining and uh, industrialization. All these are sect are productive are productive sector, which if being if it is being harnessed together. It will certainly boost the, GP, the GT, GDP of the state. So I think I will give it priority. And also the social sector of uh, security, peace and harmony, education, health care delivery, commerce, housing and uh, infrastructure. The coast is now clear for Senator Aisha Binani to focus on persuading voters to support her for governorship of Adamawa State. As the other political Amen. parties present their own candidates, it can be expected that the elections will be keenly contested. 
The All Progressives Congress Governorship Election Committee has declared the suspended Catholic priest, Mr. Hyacinth Alia, as the Benue State APC governorship candidate. Just as aggrieved aspirants kicked against the adoption of direct primaries, alleging that the entire process is fraught with irregularities. Chairman of the committee, Mr. Peter Oje, while announcing the results after a 72 hour long process, that began with delegates arriving for indirect primaries before it was cancelled, and a new directive issued for the direct primary mode, says Mr. Alia emerged with a total of 526,807 votes to be 12 other aspirants. Reacted to the declaration, some of the aggrieved aspirants are threatening to challenge the process, alleging it is fraught with substantial non-compliance with the Electoral Act with regards to the time frame, authentication of voter register, and deployment of election materials to all the 276 council wards in the state. It is a meeting of the leadership of the All Progressives Congress in Benue State, as officials brainstorm with the 13 governorship aspirants on how to go about the selection of its governorship candidate. The party later settles for indirect primaries. But after delegates had been mobilized for the election, the process is suspended and delegates advised to go to the 276 council wards of the state for direct primaries, which has now produced a candidate. Reverend Father High Saint Alia, 526,807, having scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared winner. This legacy of transparency and accountability will be faithfully bequeathed into our political dealings come 2023. But some aggrieved aspirants are not taking the outcome for granted, as they have raised issues concerning the procedure and how and what to do when conducting direct primaries. My own ward, where election materials came so late, I got about 2,900 votes. But when the entire result was reported in Makudi, the man they said had won got 70,000 votes. And I was said to have got second position with 49 votes. 49, not 49,000. So, and some other aspirants from my local government were said to have got zero. Not even members of, his, of their families vote for them. So you know exactly what is happening. We are not bothered. We know that it's been a sham. It's a chariot. In Zamfara State, Governor Belu Matawali applauds the party for being in full control, with the emergence of former Governor Abdulaziz Yari as the unopposed candidate for Zamfara West Senatorial District, while Senators Kabiru Marafa clinched the Zamfara Central and Sahabi Yao won the senatorial ticket in Zamfara North. As I said, APC is in control of Zamfara State, no doubt about that. And uh, be rest assured that uh, this uh, consolation that we do, we have done this because of God and uh, we mean it, we mean our word. All of us are going to work together for the success of APC from president to state assembly by God's grace. As the APC rounds off the selection process of its candidate at the state and national assembly levels, the party appears determined to focus its attention on its presidential primary scheduled for the 6th to 8th of June 2022. In the meantime, the Catholic Church has been explaining why serving clergy cannot participate in partisan politics. According to His Grace, Dr. Adewale Martins, Catholic priests who decide to go into politics will have to leave the church, as is stated in the doctrine. He was speaking at a press briefing after church service celebrating World Communication Day. Well, talking about the, 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 the fact that the nation is divided, the appointment, of, the appointment of critical positions is certainly one of the indicators that show that this country is, uh, is, uh, is really, truly divided. And uh, we are just hoping and praying that as we look towards 2023, those of us who are going to vote, we will look at the, at the, at the track records of those whom we are going to vote into power. 
we look at track records of how much they have been in the forefront of promoting unity, not by word of mouth, but by action, by decisions, by the way they, by what they say and by what they do. I believe that this is absolutely necessary in deciding upon those who will lead us into the, into the future. Yes, indeed, there is a, a priest that, of Goku Diocese that was suspended uh, because he decided to engage in partisan politics. And not just engage in partisan politics, seeking political office through a, 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 a political party. Well, the, the discipline of the church is that anyone who has holy orders, anyone who is a priest or who is a religious cannot participate in partisan politics without, without, uh, without undermining the position that he holds as a religious leader, as a spiritual guide. Still ahead on the news at 10. Gunmen kill lecturer in Nassau State, kidnap daughters, police launch manhunt to apprehend attackers. That's in a moment. We join us again. Welcome back with the 2023 general elections barely a year away. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has urged Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, a chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, to immediately extend the deadline for voter registration. According to SERAP, extending the voter registration deadline will provide more time for eligible voters, including the elderly, young people, people living with disabilities, as well as those residents in states fighting security challenges and living in IDP camps to participate in the 2023 elections. In a letter dated May 28, 2022, and signed by Serap's Deputy Director, Kolawali Oluwadari, the organization says voters are also critical stakeholders in the electoral process. Serap further states that extending the deadline for voter registration would be entirely consistent with constitutional and international standards and the Electoral Act. Meanwhile, the argument that has engulfed the political space about zoning and the merits of inclusive governance that it purportedly brings are unscientific, unconstitutional, and do not bring about desired outcomes. It's a view of former special advisor on political affairs to former president, Oluchigo Masanjo, and now presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Redemption Party, Dr. Usman Bugaji. He told Channel's television Ladi Akhredulale on our current affairs program, Newsnight, the debate should be about a candidate's character, previous record of performance, and plans for growth and development. The idea of where you come from is, in the first place, unscientific, undemocratic, and unconstitutional. And another point is that, remember, in a democracy, it's a matter of choice. So let whoever wants to come out, come out, and let the people choose. That's the whole idea. It's unconstitutional because constitution has not you know, determined. I mean, you don't find zoning in the constitution. The constitution, you know, I mean, does not uh, provide for any zoning. It's the parties that, you know, use zoning as a strategy to get, if you like, votes. If they think that are people who are interested in this and if they put forward this particular person. But look at it this way. We have done zoning in a way. What has actually zoning brought to this country? I mean, we started right from the, 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 the 1999 with some kind of zoning because it was the North that agreed that the presidency should go to the South. And that's how Obasanjo was persuaded to come and, uh, and contest. And I was there when these things were being discussed, right? He finished, and then somebody came from the North, and it didn't, uh, it didn't last long. Uh, uh, another person came from the South, and he did what he did. And then another person came from the north. So you, you, for me, there is sufficient scientific evidence that zoning is a stupid idea because we have done it. But look at where the country is. In the last 23 years or so, I mean, this country has become far more impoverished 
despite the unprecedented old revenue that we got during this particular period. So these are issues that have detained our democracy and has not allowed us to move forward. Look, look at the person who is coming. What is the antecedent? What is he to offer? Put him in a debate. Ask him questions. Find out. He has a record. Find out that record. What has he done when he held offices that he has held? How clean is he? How corrupt is he? All this you can find out. That is what matters. It's not where you come from. And I've said it severally. I don't want to know where my president comes from. I want to know if my president is competent, if he is credible, and if he has what it takes to fix the problems of this country. That's what is important. You can watch the full interview with Dr. Bugaji on Newsnight as tomorrow, Monday, May 30, 2022, at 9 p.m. right here on Channels Television. Security now gunmen have killed a lecturer at the Isa Mustafa Aguay Polytechnic Lafia in Nasarawa State, Mr. Zakari Kibu, and abducted two of his daughters during the attack. A police public relations officer, Rahman Nansel, confirmed the incident to Channel's television today. The Commissioner of Police has since visited the scene, condoled with the bereaved, and assured the family of the victim that a comprehensive investigation will be carried out and no stone will be left unturned in order to rescue the abducted victims. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arrested a former governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari. The Antigraft Agency also picked up the chairman and managing director of Phoenix Professional, Mr. Anthony Yaro. Both were picked for their alleged role in the 84 billion naira fraud involving former Accountant General of the Federation. Yari was picked up at about 5 p.m. today, allegedly benefited to the tune of 22 billion naira through Phoenix Professional. And in River State, the police have confirmed that 31 persons died in the stampede that occurred in Port Harcourt. A public relations officer of the State Police Command, Grace Irige Koko, confirmed this to Channel's television. Hundreds of people were queuing in anticipation of aid supplies at the Port Harcourt Polo Club in GRA when the incident occurred. This is the polo club in the new GRA axis of Port Harcourt River State, where a new generation church, the King's Assembly, was to have distributed aid in food and other items to less privileged persons. The setup in here shows how prepared the church was in attempting to manage the anticipated crowd. However, the unexpected happened when hundreds of persons arrived and attempted to push through the gate, even before the organizers arrived at the venue leaving 31 persons dead in a stampede. So when I came, I saw the crowd, and I saw people fighting, eager to enter the gates. The well, security was trying to hold them back, but the force, the crowd was so much, so we were even suffocating there. More than a few people around that gate trying to stop the crowd, but the crowd was so much. So I believe in that case, some people were suffocating themselves. Some of the attendees are said to have arrived here a day before to beat the rush. People in the far back, come here to sleep because of the food, what how did they call it, food, water, free food. When I come to the, come see all these things, when people die, even I was there. The police have confirmed the casualty figure as efforts are on by Channel Television to establish contact with families of the victims and the organizers of the event. This is not the first time the church will organize such an event, usually tagged, shop for free, and keeping hope alive. Some years back, I had this kind of information too that uh, is giving uh, free education and stuff. So I went to the church, I wrote my name, and uh, after some few months, I get a message from uh, Ken Poli Bori, and I was opportunity to enroll in the skill. So I choose a wedding and fabrication, and uh, in which today I benefit from him and with my certificates. As of that time, they were paying us 10,000 10, naira per month. And um, after everything, they still give me a wedding machine, give me some certain tools for my department, which everybody that enroll on the platform of that, uh, this thing, achieve this thing. So I don't think uh, this man has done wrong for this kind of thing to happen, but uh, we feel bad about it. A similar incident in December 2022 also claimed many lies as people rushed to collect palliatives from an e-commerce company 
Many are, however, blaming the stampede on the high rate of poverty in the country, while appealing to organizers of such events to be better prepared. President Mamadou Buhari, in reaction to the death of 31 people at the church program in Port Harcourt, says he's extremely saddened by the incident. In a press release through his media aide, Gerber Shehu, President Buhari directed the disaster and relief agencies of the federal government remain in constant contact with the River State government for relief efforts. Meanwhile, the River State Governor, Nyeso Mwike, is constituting a panel to investigate the deaths. He's also expressed his condolences to the families of the bereaved. A church, King's Assembly, whose program it was, the incident occurred in a press release by its director of administration, Chimeka Elem, disclosed that it happened hours before a benevolence and outreach program was due to hold at Polo Club Port Harcourt and has commissioned a team of safety specialists to establish the cause of the stampede and other measures to curb it in the near future. Health issues now. The outbreak of monkeypox, a viral zoonotic disease, is causing a stare as it spreads uh, to many non-endemic countries in Europe, America and the United Kingdom. According to the World Health Organization, in the third week of May, the number of people affected with this multi-country outbreak, which up until recently was confined to endemic regions of West and Central Africa, was 92. But the tally keeps rising. A correspondent, Mary Alale Yusuf, has more. The huge blisters of monkeypox are almost more frightening than the viral disease itself, which is closely related to smallpox. On May 6, 2022, a traveler from Nigeria to the UK started exhibiting symptoms of monkeypox. Barely two weeks after the pox had spread to America and several countries in Europe, 16 in all, and by the third week in May, the World Health Organization had recorded 92 confirmed cases. This is the first and, uh, widespread occurrence in non-endemic countries, in and the World Health Organization is calling it an outbreak. Uh, this outbreak can still be contained, and it is the objective uh, of the World Health, World Health Organization and member states uh, to contain this outbreak and to stop it. Not so in Nigeria, where cases have been popping up since 2017. There is no outbreak of monkeypox. I think the term outbreak is being used wrongly. Yes, we are having cases of monkeypox, just like we continued, we have had, uh, continued to have out uh, monkeypox cases since it reemerged in 2017. So monkeypox is endemic to this environment, is endemic to West Africa. So it's not that we know we have monkeypox around. It is a contagious virus. It's like chickenpox, but it looks a bit worse than chickenpox. It's not that contagious, and it doesn't cause death like COVID or Ebola. So the fact that monkeypox is showing up all over the world is a reflection of how mobile we are as human beings and a reflection of the fact that this environmental um, uh, degradation we're talking about, where we're forcing animals and human beings into the same space, is really a problem for the world. The first human case of monkeypox was recorded in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1970, with sporadic cases occurring at different times in remote villages in Central and West Africa's tropical rainforests. Since 2017 to date, we have had about 558 um, monkeypox cases with about eight deaths. Um, this year alone, we've had 46 suspected cases reported and about eight um, cases confirmed with no deaths. Three other African countries, Cameroon, Central African Republic and Democratic Republic of the Congo, have recorded cases of monkeypox between the 15th of December 2021 and 1st of May 2022. Up until recently, monkeypox has been rare because of protection conferred by the smallpox vaccine. But now more cases are appearing in unvaccinated people. Monkeypox presents with fever, extensive characteristic bumpy rash and swollen lymph nodes. With no specific treatment for the disease, prevention and control involve avoiding sick or dead animals, proper cooking of all food containing animal meat, avoiding close contact with infected people and regular hand washing with soap and water. Monkeypox is usually mild and self-limiting and can be contained by isolating affected persons and treating symptomatically. 
Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. Nigerian children in South Africa and their friends from neighboring countries have joined in the celebration of Children's Day this weekend. Event hosted by the Consulate General in Johannesburg was put together by the Nigeria Women Association South Africa. Among the special guests present was the wife of the Nigerian High Commissioner to South Africa, Mrs. Hawa Manta. The new Consul General, Mr. Andrew Idi, who spoke on behalf of Ambassador Mohammed Manta, appealed to parents and older people and older children, uh, older people, the children come across to positively, positively mentor them in order to adequately prepare them to thrive in today's fast changing world. These were the VIPs, and they stuck to the agenda to the letter to have fun, food, and the party favors, of course. For the older people present, all the other elements, especially the march past, brought fun memories as the children basked in the joy of being honored by their nation. Nigeria's new Consul General, Mr. Andrew E.D., appealed for positive mentoring of the children to prepare them adequately for today's world. We must show them love, we must show them kindness, we must train them, we must prepare them to compete in today's world. Between the first century is the century for the strong. If we leave our kids unprepared, weak, we are not helping them. The children's speeches covered love, peace and unity, friendship, different dimensions of bullying. And for many as well, of great concern is the difficulty they experience in renewing their permits in South Africa. I suggest that there should be an office set up for Nigerian youth and children, which the parents should go and submit their children documents, and youth can also do the same. After all, documents have been submitted. The leader who is in charge, in charge will make sure they are submitted to the home affairs for processing. Those being celebrated showed off what they are made of in different ways and more. It's spectacular. I just want to say thank you for Nigeria and thank you to all Nigerians. All done. The organizers of the event, the Nigerian Women's Association South Africa, sent up the children with prayers. God should just bless them. God should keep our children. God should make our children stand out wherever. At this point in time, when Nigeria is in so much chaos, my prayer is that the Lord will use our children to minister to these politicians that they are leading them astray. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty D, Channel's Television News. Staying on the foreign scene, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky today visited uh, Ukrainian troops on the front lines of the northeastern Kharkiv region. A video emerged online of him visiting damaged buildings and stopping at a roadside where a number of burned out vehicles remained. It will be the first official appearance he's made outside the Kyiv region since the start of the invasion. <laughs> President Volodymyr Zelensky made his first official trip outside the Kyiv region on Sunday since the Russian invasion of his country. His mission was to encourage those on the front line of the war in Kharkiv, 30 percent of which has been occupied by Russia since the invasion. He told the army personnel in Kharkiv, you risk your lives for us all and for our country. He also handed out awards and gifts. There were reports of explosions shortly after the president's visit. A message to the threat posed by the invading forces there may have subsided, but not entirely gone. <laughs> Russia announced on Saturday it had taken complete control of the town of Lehman in the Donetsk region, a move not yet confirmed by the Ukrainians. 
Russia and Ukraine troops have been fighting for Lehman for several days amid Russia's ongoing special military operation in Ukraine since February 24. A daily update by the Russian Defense Ministry says it gained full control of the town, a pivotal railway hub with the joint efforts of Russian forces and pro-Russia fighters in Donetsk. The Russian military also says it has destroyed two Ukrainian command posts in Bakhmut and Solodar with high-precision air-launched missiles. Russian air defense systems also shot down one Ukrainian Mi-8 helicopter and two Ukrainian Su-25 aircrafts. President Zelensky says the situation in the east of the country is indescribably difficult as Russia intensifies its offensive. He says Ukraine is working to boost weapons supplies and is approaching the point where it would outnumber the Russians, both technologically and in terms of its ability to strike. Ukraine's defense minister says the country started receiving Harpoon anti-ship missiles from Denmark, arms that will bolster forces fighting Russia's invasion. He said Harpoon shore-to-ship missiles would be operated alongside Ukrainian Neptune missiles to defend the coast including the southern port of Odessa. Meanwhile, Russia is reported to have fired its latest multiple rocket system against Ukrainian targets in the Kharkiv region, a weapon described as a giant flamethrower. The attack has not been officially confirmed. And just before we go to sports news, a PDP presidential candidate Atiko Rebeka today paid a thank you visit to the Sokoto state governor and former presidential hopeful Amin Tambawal in his Abuja residence. Mr. Abubakar was accompanied by his entourage, led by his campaign coordinator, Senator Dino Melaye. Mr. Tambawal was until the 11th hour going to run against Mr. Atiku in the PDP presidential election, but withdrew his candidacy and threw his support behind Mr. Atiku. Mr. Atiku eventually emerged victorious, polling 371 votes to defeat his closest rival, Governor Yesumike of River State, who polled 237 votes. Other contestants include former Senate President Ayim Payas Ayim and Bukola Saraki, and Governors Bala Mohamed of Bochi State and Udom Emmanuel of Akwaibom State. Bringing it home, the Super Eagles of Nigeria have moved to New Jersey earlier today, ahead of Thursday's clash with Ecuador at the Red Bull Arena in Harrison. The three-time African champions this morning lost by one goal to two against Mexico at the iconic AT&T Stadium in Dallas in what was the first match of coach Jose Pacero as head coach of the Super Eagles. In, it is uh, so many first-team players, including Captain Ahmed Musa. The game is the first time uh, they were coming together for any session since the disappointment of the 2022 FIFA World Cup ticket miss. And the main news again. Abia State Police Command today confirmed the kidnap of prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, Samuel Uche, and two other priests in Uturu Hube, axis of the state. APC presidential hopeful Bola Tinubu congratulated the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Al Haji Tukbuk Abubakar, and described him as a worthy opponent for 2023. More senatorial candidates emerged on the platform of the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Grand Alliance in the southern geopolitical zones. And also today, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited troops on the front line of war in Kharkiv. Thanks for watching. I'm Amarachi.